Okay, Al Prophet, American Dope. I'm here in Detroit visiting with my uh, one of my main guys, Courtney Rapper Brown Jr. What up, family? What up, dog? What Lou? up? What up, Big Lou? And we're here at their. Uh, he's not done remodeling. He's still got some Louis Vuitton and wigs on the other side. Uh, but yeah. this will soon be a uh, podcast studio here on Detroit Scenic Seven what? Mile Road. Famous. Famous West Famous Seven, seven Mile. Uh, the, West, ho- the Hollywood of Detroit. The, you yeah. already know. Se- West Seven Mile, baby, ask somebody. Now, you've made a lot of money in this building in many different ways. I uh, bought this building 10 years ago. We've done three different concepts. Not to mention things on the side. Not to, <laughs> but this, yeah, this property here, 16311, uh, has served, it served, it served me and the family and, and the crew very so well. So some of you will be getting interviewed here, but before we get into something I want to talk about, uh, the connection between YBI and your guy's family, uh, his dad was the star of Motown Mafia. Um, Available on Tubi. And everything, yeah. except Netflix, because they don't pay. Um <laughs> Uh, they were the big fellas of the 70s. Your dad went in in 77, got out in 84. But before we get into that, let's let's detour to a quick story about the Westies and your father, believe it or not. The Westies were the Irish mob out of Manhattan, uh, lunatic assassins. Shout out to the guys on Six Mile. But they were doing hits for the Gambinos, and they were just killing people on their own. Had a very treacherous, bad reputation involving taking people's lives for little to no reason and little to no money, but your dad found himself in the same federal uh, correctional institute as he was being, <laughs> as his behavior was being corrected, <laughs> and you were like a senior in high school, and by this time, uh, you guys were still, you know, living uh, definitely upper, upper middle class, but you weren't rich. Anymore. Uh, Mom had started some businesses, and that's really what the money was coming from. The money from the 70s was gone, but one day that changed. One day that changed. So as, as Pops recalls the story, there was a guy named Jerry, a Sicilian guy, who was like the What cop. joint was he in? This is in Milan now. Okay. Well, actually, he met Polly in Atlanta, and then they both got transferred up to Milan. Because, you know, that's they send you away. When you first go away, they send you far away. But USP Atlanta's hardcore. The USP Atlanta, especially in the 70s. That's where, that's where like, the Aryan Brotherhood first was doing murders. That's where they had all the French connection. Yeah, and all Vince the Papa things. was down there with them. Um, actually, him and Vince got cool right before they actually whacked Vince Papa. Vince Papa was from the French Connection. And, and the rest of the French Connection crew. And, like, four of them got killed in two weeks at Atlanta. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was... No, there was nine murders in Atlanta in, like, two months. Papa they got, cleared the decks of the French Connection. Crazy story. Guy comes in. And, and then the head of the French Connection got out early when Reagan came in. But yeah. that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say the canary in the mouth story. Pop's talking about some guy they let in who was on that French Connection case. He got to Atlanta at noon. By 3 p.m., they had already put the canary in his mouth. And he was... He was out of there within three hours once he got to Atlanta. So that's where you're... So they, they considered him one of the more dangerous people in the country. I mean, in terms of power. Potential power. And uh, and it was down there with your man, um, Ike Atkins, was down there. Him okay. and Ike did time on that, you know, the whole Sergeant Smack. But anyway, so he, he pops and made friends with this guy, Pauly, who's the conduit, as you kind of just have said. He knew the Gambinos. He knew the Genovese's. He wasn't a made man himself because I think he was only oh. half the city. And half Irish or something? And, and probably because when they get to Milan, Pauly cuts in them and says, O'Leary and the crew... Want to holler at you? Pop just minding his own business, getting ready to go home. Get ready to go home, and he like O'Leary and the crew want to talk to you. They said let's. They want to talk tomorrow in, in the library. Pop's like, you know, him and Polly solid, so he's like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They cut into him and they say, um, "You the big man's man, right?" Pop like, who you talking about, Eddie? He say, "Yeah, yeah, that's my man." They say, uh, "I think we got some mutual friends." He's talking about. Um, Doc, um, Carmine Lombardozzi. Ooh. He's talking about Carmine Lombardozzi. Back in New York, who was serving Eddie? Eddie. Same world. So, he, so he's like... He's and Mickey like, Beckwith, and a Frank, Frank Matthews. Frank Matthews, fan. number two, who, who Pop did... T- him and Pop got cool down in Atlanta, too. Oh, okay. Um, so he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same people. They're like, well, let me... You know, this. They checked with whoever was going to be okay. To make sure it was okay for them to start this this business enterprise, and so the Italian guy O'Leary tells them, "Let me just run this by my Italian friends, make sure everything everything." Oh, the Irish guy O'Leary. The Irish guy O'Leary says, "Let me run this a plan by my some of my friends back in New York." 
of everything is everything. He comes back and tells Pops that it's like those guys speak very, very highly of him. So, he, so here's the thing. If you got some people outside, I got a bag. He didn't say a bag. They didn't use yeah. that word back there. The package was already in Boston. Mm. Now, I wonder why we wouldn't know this now, but it's... Were those guys just not, they weren't known for being drug dealers, but they might have had access to stuff, but why couldn't they dump it on the East Coast? It, could it have been, they took it from somebody, or like, or no telling? Now that you say it in with time, I think you're right, it was a gypsy bag, because when, when Pop and the crew ran through, like, the 10 bricks. That was it. That was it. It wasn't really a plug, they had a load. They had, and. And, and they were known for taking and killing. Because yeah, they didn't have to re up. They didn't. They never kept it going. So it was ten, ten bricks. Ten bricks. And that's a lot of hair. What would that be? By the time something like that hit the street, in what was this? Eighty two. This would have been eighty two. What I mean, roughly, if when that goes to dimes, I mean, what is it? A million a I key? Mean, half million a key? I mean, shit. Wholesale. Put a five on it. Put a five on it. Wholesale. What was yeah. the wholesale? Eighty. Eighty. So right. That's what I'm saying. So you put a five on it, right? And then you can still wholesale it. At what? At how much each? <laughs> the same eighty. <laughs> oh, and then it's still getting broke down. So it might be more like one point five million or yeah, something. Yeah, what it was also, It was a good run. It was a good run. So it's, what was what was your like? How did you know that? Because you told me something about how you were sort of vaguely involved in terms of picking up money or. N- not really on that because I'm still in high school. Or you were, they were knocking on the door. Right? But it's a couple of the OGs actually still kind of active so I cannot but like uh, somebody God, God rest his soul um and to the big homie over there off 12th off um that Davidson 12th exit you know I will never forget the kindness you showed me in working with pops making sure that my high school days went by uh the big homie over there know who he is Asalaamu Alaikum and Alaikum Salaam um hmm. God rest his soul, John the Baptist. A lot of Pops crew, really. John the look. Baptist? John the oh, Baptist. That's a dope yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, so, yeah, all of a sudden, once Pop gets this thing on, he's, you know, when we go up to visit him, he just, he's like, kind of, it's like, things going to be a little bit better. Mm. He's like, a senior trip was coming up and shit like that, graduation. He like, don't even worry about nothing. Everything going to be everything. And I'm like, what you mean when you get home? He's like, nah, you going to be good just last year of high school. Don't even worry about it. All of a sudden, um, I can say shout out. Shout out to Jerry, the boy, your family, and all them. Um, Jerry, the Baptist, and the big homie from over there. Um, they would they just start knocking on the door, and they'd be like, your mom home? Sometimes she would be, sometimes she wouldn't be. She'd be like, he'd be like, this from your pops. Look in the bag, $50,000, $30,000. Just like all of a sudden, now it's back like we me we was growing up. I got allowance again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we have we have went. We are no longer shopping at the sales rack at Hudson. We back in downtown Birmingham. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit got back nice. You know, car and all the other little amenities. Um, my sister had went to Europe. Yeah, my sister was getting ready, but then they were able to send my sister over to. Your sister who became a lawyer. Yeah, they was able to send her for a master's degree. Over in, uh, she got a master's over in Europe. Oh, and so if you're in another country, you're not getting financial aid or a scholarship. No, 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 no. So that was wet. That was Westy's money. That was Westy's money, and um, educated a young black woman in Europe. Black woman, yeah. World is an interesting and complicated place. At the same time, but the, the Westies was what I mean. Yeah, but now that you say it and the, how that run ended, it wasn't. It was a gyp, what they call a gypsy load. They had, they had come across. These 10, yeah. however they got them. Yeah. And, and probably didn't want it, because I'm sure they had people that could have sold them on the East Coast, but they didn't want anyone to know they had them probably. I mean, they in Boston. They right. Got, New, they York, New York, Boston, Boston or Philly, Boston alone. Boston yeah. alone, and it was, the, the bag was right. Yeah. But they didn't want it, no. They, uh, so know. they needed someone in another heroin city, of which there, you know, was the East Coast, and then it was... Detroit. I mean, there weren't a lot of heroin cities back then. Like, did no, you could Detroit, Chicago? Did you really, dump? That you knew you could put the bag in and it'd be turned into money fast. In a few months. Yeah, that right. amount too. Right. Millions and millions of dollars. And it's only a handful of guys because this is a credit deal, and the guy you're giving the credit is from in is, prison. Is in prison. Yeah. So your pops' credibility 
That'd that, be through the roof. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm giving the guy the bag who's locked up. So I'm completely dependent on his word and his organization and his knowledge. And he's been gone for seven years at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no no problems that you know about, yeah. Smooth no, sailing. No, I mean. <laughs> well, that we can mention. You know, we was just talking on that. Um, that that whole Milan thing, again, the big homie I'm talking about over there, Aslam Alaikum. Um, he was up there. Uh, Demetrius was at Milan. Um, I just saw the big homie KK. Shout out to the big homie KK. That shit was a uh, uh, Wakefield was up there. Eddie oh. O'Man there too. Muhammad, who becomes the Pakistani plug. Oh. He in Milan too. Okay, so now let's walk into that. Okay, so so uh, Eddie. And later your dad was serving some of the former YBI people. But that plug came along. So take us through that library, once again, in the library. And a, but there was something in Chicago. Tell oh. us that story. Okay, so he meets Muhammad, who's in federal penitentiary for narcotic smuggling. You don't say. Yeah, 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 hmm. yeah. What country was he from? Pa- Pakistan. Oh, Pakistan. Okay. Pakistan. But now the thing is, so this is in the mid-'80s they meet. I mean, early 80s. 80 80. So this would have been right after the Westy thing or around the time or hard to say. Or this was right when he was getting out. This was right when they're getting out. He's getting out. So the rest of Westy thing has happened. That took, what, six months, four months? By the time, that bag was gone by the time I graduated in April. So say the bag hit right before Thanksgiving. Okay, so four or five months. Yeah, the bag hit right around Thanksgiving. Ten bricks. They ran, the crew ran through that. On the street, okay. They ran through that quick. And then, so when did he get out? 84. 84. So he still had about a little less than two years left once that bag was done. Once that bag was done. So then leading maybe six months or something before he gets out, that's when Muhammad approaches him? You know, the, no, no, I guess get the time right. He doesn't hook up with Muhammad actually for another eight years. Oh, I, well, okay, but that was a thing where he had to go to... Chicago, and they were afraid to grab some. Right, so, um, and then shout out and rest in peace to the fat man. So what ended up happening to help us bridge that gap between that Westy bag running out and him eventually getting out, Eddie gets out a year before, mm. in 83, um, and then starts looking out, so. And, was a, okay, so tell us that Muhammad, that 90, was that 92? 92, or so they didn't become cool from the joint, right? Vaguely stayed in touch with each other. He gets a phone call. Actually, it's the story go. He had given Muhammad, my grandmother, God rest her soul's phone number. She called Pops. It's like some funny talking guy called here named Muhammad. Say, what time can he call back to talk to you? Pops. Did AC? Huh? Did AC come on? I don't know, you know. I'll just take my shirt off. Okay, so yeah, yeah, Muhammad yeah, calls. Yeah, Muhammad calls. Um, Pop like tell him to call tomorrow at four, right? Um, he talk. He tells Pops, "I'm gonna be in Detroit tomorrow. Can you pick me up from the train station?" Pop like, "Yeah, whatever, whatever." Pop like when he meet when he pick up Muhammad the next day. So this yeah, this is like ninety two. He then just got out because he gets violated in 89. Mm. That's to do 18 months. Mm-hmm. When they run up in this place on Six Mile, they find a gun. Pops. The, yeah, the, the, this oh, is okay. following that Bahamas action. There was a lot going on family back in the day. There's a lot going on. <laughs> My father and his friends, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this, that, that clicked right. there, man. So anyway, um, Muhammad's like, brother, brother, you have to help me get to Canada. I have to go back home. But here's the thing, that's what he always called Pops, was brother. He say, brother, but my Iranian friend, he got pinched in Chicago. Another 10 low. He's like, but this one, he's like, he's got 10 untouched Lebanese bricks, 90%. Muhammad says, I don't think my man, the Iranian guy, he says, I don't think he flipped on us. He's like, but I can't take no chances. Because he just got out. He yeah. just got out. He's like, I got to get to Windsor. You got to help me get to Windsor. I got to get back to Pakistan. He gives Pop the address, location, of where these suitcases in are Chicago. at in Chicago. He says, brother, if you can get them, 
We split it. Pop like, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My phone might be hot. This show could be a suicide. Yeah. Run. And Muhammad was emphatic though. He was like, I think my guy stand up. But he ain't get. But he can't make no guarantee. But he can't make no guarantees. Like I think he stand up. But and Pop like, all right, check it out. I'm gonna put together a crew. We are gonna go check it out. I ain't gonna make you no promises. Rest in peace again, John the Baptist, uh, Ernie, Donald. It's a white boy that hung out with Donald. I don't even know what his name was, but he was a soldier. I actually, come the white boy was the was the hero. <laughs> um, hmm. It's about a six man crew. He takes to Chicago. They camp out for a day, just checking out the apartment building. Pop say after a day, he ain't seen nothing. You know, Pop, by this time, he been around the block and around the block and around the block. He like, this joint ain't under no surveillance. He like, this this spot ain't hot. He like, tomorrow morning, we going there, y'all going, we going in there and get that. Now, he can't tell the crew that they going to get 10 bricks, though. Mm. He tell them there's some suitcases in there with a whole bunch of jewelry. Why doesn't he, doesn't he just... He didn't, he didn't want to know. He didn't want, he didn't want to know. Much. It's too much. Yeah, yeah. People start thinking all kind yeah, of crazy. Yeah, yeah. All kind of crazy shit. He tells them that it's a link, though. And these all street guys. Yeah. They like, you know, Berman, as they call him, you know. They're like, Berman, we always coming across some licks. Yeah. You know? And he mm -hmm. like, it's a lick. It's, he's like, you know, it's a few hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry in there. My man, yada, yada, yada. He spends some story. Like, we just got to grab the bag, get back to Detroit, fence it. We're going to have be able to eat good. They still a little bit leery, and as Pop said, and it was the uh, white boys like, uh, hey, Mr. Brown, man, fuck this, man. You say it ain't hot. What we just doing all this watching for? Let's go grab this shit and get back to Detroit. Pop's like, here go the keys. Go in there, they grab three suitcases. Hit 94. No issues. No. No. Nothing. No, and <laughs> I was living in New York at the time. And literally, as the as soon as they got back to Detroit, I happened just to be calling to check in, and um, those infamous words, Pop is like, "I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> Don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about nothing." And then I'm just thinking he's just talking. He say, and now that I know that I see he's starting to talk cryptically, he say, "Nah, Junior, I'm trying to tell you. Don't worry about nothing. Nothing. We good." That was six months later. He would send Muhammad. Four million dollars. Oh wow! So now though, oh, that's what they made. So they made eight million off of the off the ten bricks. Yeah, because he started. He broke he put, it down. He put a fifteen on it and sold it. He put a fifteen on it. Put a man, Fat Frank, got arrested, sold down in the projects. Brewsters. Brewsters. Eddie on French Road. Oh. Eddie was doing. Frank was doing twenty five, thirty thousand a day. Eddie was doing twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a day. Oh, so that was the land. That was so you guys. Then had we had $40, um, fifty thousand dollars. Shout out to Family C. Then we had one guy who was um, who was wholesaling. That Pop would actually, because Pop never liked to sell weight. There was one guy that was real close to the family. Shout out again, brother C out there. Um, you know he would move half bricks. But again, we put a fifteen on it, so that's every every. That ten bricks. So it, when you say put a fifteen, it's still before it hit the street. It's still got another five put on it or something. Oh yeah, 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 easy, easy. So the ten turned in to one fifty. Right. We take ten keys. We put a fifteen on it. Ten times fifteen, you got one hundred and fifty bricks of heroin. Of heroin, better than anything on the streets. Better than anything on the streets. So during that that year or so, like, uh, oh, that started a whole run. Oh, so That's, he sends them four million, and some more comes. And now they back Muhammad back up in the mountains because he's in he like lived, Waziristan. He's or something? right at the border, right at the Afghanistan oh. Pakistan oh, border. Oh, where Bin Laden hit out at the tribal. Right. He's up there. They call it the tribal territories. Oh. And um, so his bosses are like, "You're telling me there's a black guy in 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 Detroit." You told him where 10 was at, and he sent us our money, and he sent some money. Because the whole the whole four wasn't just for the bag. It was actually a payment. For on some more. On some more. He's like, what kind of, and, and Muhammad's telling the tribal bosses, I told you, brother, it's different. Hmm. He's different. He not, he not flat. And the whole time, Pop's driving around this town in like a, a Nova. Chevy Nova. A Chevy Nova. On parole. On parole. 
with 150 bricks that he moving. I mean, he didn't get a mink coat and throw money in the air at the strip club? <laughs> <laughs> Levi's. That's not how it's done? That's how. <laughs> I mean, we later we let our hair down. A few years later, we you do have a nice mink coat collection. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we let our hair down. We let our hair down a little bit. Um, but yeah, that ran from ninety two to ninety seven. Wow. So during that whole time, the operation was uh, where would it come in the country at? Mainly northern Cal, Los Angeles, San Francisco, or New York. And so, you guys would pick it up there? Correct. And one of your, didn't one of the times one of your people got, the load got intercepted? Twice. Twice. We, we lost, we lost, shout out to Schoolyard George, straight up soldier. Mm. So one of your people, he took, I mean, so what, how does, how does, you know, not everybody tell. Some people are solid organizations, but when somebody doesn't tell, you got to do something for them. Like, how would that work if someone took the fall for you guys? I mean... Okay, so two two different scenarios. One guy, old guy, he's out here now still. Schoolyard George, another him and Papa did time, got cool. You know, Papa and them come from really. If I don't do time with you, I don't want to do no crime yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of kind of yeah. thing. But both times it wasn't on our end. It would be Muhammad's carriers would get pinched, mm. they'd roll, and then our people be walking into a death trap. Mm. So same situation. George go out to New York to pick up the bag. How how much was it? It was like a, it was a smaller one. It was like five. a five grand. Okay. And um, Muhammad's mule then got popped, mm. and he then rolled. They got the room all set up. George and we, everybody think you know because the way it worked, the mule don't know who Courtney is. Yeah, he just knows. And he's our carrier someone. and our carrier don't know who Muhammad is. Yeah, and that's how a pop gets yeah. protected and Muhammad is protected, right? Because all that mule knows is somebody's gonna come. And all our people know is when... And the, all the mule can tell on is someone in the tribal area that they can't go get is meaningless, yeah. Yeah, right? right? So, George get popped on with the five bricks. You know, we have told the story. George, old school guy, you know, <laughs> he spent most of his life in, in jail. And he come from down there, Homestead, Miami. Hardcore, hardcore, would kill a rock for the old man and might kill anybody else just because he from that ancient times. He from the ancient times. Yeah, so when the feds pop him. Oh, but he's living in Detroit now. He's living in Detroit right now. Oh, yeah, I gave him a house or something, right? Okay, anything we could do, we, yeah. it was done. Yeah. Um, he tell the feds, can y'all do me a favor? Send me someplace warm. Mm. He's like, y'all know I ain't, you know. Look at my look at my jacket. And to the feds' credit, they didn't even sweat it too much. They was like, give him this 20, man. And let's keep moving on with this. So he, this so guy, like, this guy ain't talking. So in like 95, he got 20 years or something? He got 20, so he did about 16. So years. when did he came out, like 2011? Right around then. Wow. Right around, right around then. And of course, we looked out for and him. He get, you say he got, he, he get a little pension uh, now he and then? Always, right? always, always. Man. And then um, Cassandra. So if you don't take care of people when they get in trouble... It's all well in that theoretical not nice snitching stuff sounds good, but like when you leave people out to dry, I mean, should it be a shock that they right. roll on you? So in his case, because he's just ultra hardcore. He, he was, wouldn't have anything. He was like, save your money, Courtney. Don't put me no lawyer because it ain't happening. You know, he now nah, you ain't going to come across these kind of people no more. Yeah. He like, oh, I don't need no lawyer. Make sure my commissary's straight. Make sure my people's straight. And when I come home, you got me, right? You know, cause, but even when Cassandra, a woman who was one of our main, this was the second time or a different, the other different time. time in Cali. How much so, she get hit with? Eight hundred fifty thousand in cash, picking up seven. Mm. I don't know why the accounting was the way it yeah. was, but she had eight and a quarter in cash on her, and she was supposed to be picking up seven. On this one, Muhammad did kind of get to us and say. No, the, the 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 agents ask her, "Where's the rest of the money?" Because by this time, I think the ticket's like one point six or something, mm. and she's got eight hundred. And the, the agents ask, "Where's the rest of the money?" And so she calls the old man. And it's like he's asking for the rest of the money, and the old man's like, "Oh no, no, something's fucked up here. Get out of there." Mm. And she like, she knows it's truth. Uh, she's like, "Fuck that, Courtney. I'm here. I'm I'm bringing this shit back." 
she continued to do the transaction. Oh, so she could have kind of... She could have walked out. I or mean, probably got in some type of trouble because she had the money, but uh, not that much. We go to Gulf Hours. Pops say, you got a lawyer out in L.A. Because you got to always hire a local lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And uh, shout out to the Gulf Hours, Chuck. Rest in peace, Irving. Chuck said, no, I got some top-notch people. It was a narcotics case, I assume, Courtney. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's a narcotics case. He's like, all right, we got we got some top flight narcotics lawyers out in L.A. That cost us another three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Oh wow. That would be three hundred fifty thousand dollars, nineties money. To, to, to like put a million on, dollars now. To put him on the case. Um, it was a bullshit. I mean, it was they had they had her dead to right, but they just had her on the money. If she hadn't have kept on with it, right. Um. They got a five. They got a five on that year. They got it down to a five piece. Boy, you get five years for five grams of crack, or you used to. Um, so for seven kilos of heroin. Conspiracy, yeah. They got, the, they got the conspiracy knocked down to just transport, and then she copped out on the on the money laundering, and they ran it together. Now, did the, Fed, the feds weren't able to kind of trace back and be like, we know you guys came from Courtney Brown? Um... Yeah, she spun him a little bit and blamed it on her her brother, who was a very very low level criminal who by this time is doing time in Jackson. Oh, okay. And she weaved this story because they feds, yeah, they knew. The feds be knowing. The feds told her. They said you work for Courtney Brown. Mm-hmm. And Did she that was, that now when how steely nerved was your father must have been. Because even when these things get lost, they just set up another load, right? Well, of course, yes. I mean, you gotta be <clears throat> pop nerves of stone. They that was hard. They you know pop, they, they criminals. <laughs> they is hard. <laughs> hard <laughs> criminals. They are hard <laughs> criminals. <laughs> I love my old man. I, you know, I said sometimes you should either get dad of the year or contribute to delinquency of a minor. minor. Yeah. But those guys are hardcore. They never even think of like it's just what we doing. Like uh oh, we in trouble. We should stop. No. <laughs> so you 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 paint your he's paying for the lawyer. You're dealing with the fallout of that, and you're still sending the secret secret the communications her, for it. we need another ten. Buy her the house. Oh, bought, bought her, her daughter. A house. Bought her daughter a house. So that was a that was a million dollar loss between the lawyers and the stuff. And the, Easy. Oh no, it was eight fifty in cash, three for the lawyer. So that's one point one. Plus her compensation, so you had one point five plus. Three houses between her daughter and just another relative. Three new whips when they get home. Oh, which they got. Yeah. Plus, plus. Um, when did Dad go in? The second time. Pops. Yeah. On that case. Yeah. Or, or not, well, that. That run ongoing, that going. Yeah. <laughs> um, not that wouldn't happen to uh, 04. And when did she get popped? Now, that was still in the heart of the run. That oh. was like 95, 96. So when she got out, Pops was still out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas George got out right around the time your Pops was getting Ooh, out. Yeah, exactly. Because there's a risk, like even if you're a soldier like that, what if while George is doing that 20, Pops gets killed or he gets a he gets life no up, parole, or he might not come up. home to nothing just because it it ain't like that. Yeah. But again, he's... It's hard in today's world for the younger audience. I mean, the older guys I know get it. It was some guys cut from that cloth back then. They just it's what it was. It, was, it just is what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. We didn't. Make, in fact, schoolyard George, we be they be at the hookup table and shit, and they used to especially drive Eddie Junior crazy, cause he when we be sitting around bushing, he would look at me, Junior. You know we all going to the jailhouse behind this shit. Niggas getting all this money. You think we ain't going to the jailhouse? And so we'd be like, man, would, jailhouse. You, would you stop saying that? Oh, I'm telling y'all boys, we all going to the jailhouse behind this shit. And I'm telling you, and he'd be like, man, don't say that no more. Mm-hmm. But it's the truth. Look at all this money. Look at all this money. You think we ain't going to the jail? So you going to jail. Yeah, he, he was different. But even Cassandra, Chan, and you got to know, in, in my case, in all our cases, um, they know I'm money laundering. They know I'm the one getting the money to Muhammad. You're part of the conspiracy. I'm, if, if, if they I suck, mean, if it all goes super duper bad, yeah. you could get 20, 30 years get, along with everybody else. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And they knew about Eddie. They knew about Big Homie. 
Um, and Eddie Senior's back in the joint for his own conspiracy, but long Eddie Senior been time. back in the yeah. joint. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, he's but didn't know about Eddie Junior. Pass in '95. Oh, so he passed during that time. He passed right. At the was your heart. dad and him kind? And I mean, he must have been in contact, but he wasn't going to see him. That would no, have been too he, hot. They talk maybe every other day. On oh, the phone. okay. I mean, I talked to Eddie on the phone. Hundred times. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because he was all about to actually think he was gonna get out. They, he got mm. a couple of things overturned. Mm. But Eddie Jr. and old man are doing a lot of business yeah. during this Pakistani thing. And um, yeah, if Sean, if George tells, if Shana tells, if her mom tells, oh, we're all everybody going to jail for a long time. For a long time. For a long time. What about well, they you? They used to assure me that I would only get ten because I had no priors. And I was a college boy. How? So how, how <laughs> that would be their counselor. Now, now They'd be like, Junior, they only going to give you 10 because you yeah. ain't never been in trouble were, were before. You, how shook were you when any of this stuff was happening? Or just because the people around you were so calm and seemed in control, you didn't get that shook. But you had to have been somewhat. I was, I was I was concerned. But you were also in your alcohol and other things. I was. I, 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 I you were definitely numbing, you're numb, numbing yourself. I numbed myself a lot to not think about you know, in this the gravity in our, of your actions. In our fictionalized book, uh, that big man on campus, I got a line in there I write to try to get people. I said, for t- from 1984, when I started working for Pops, to the year 2000, when I stopped working for Pops, every day for 20 years thinking about when this shit goes south, I'm getting the fuck out of this country. I ain't playing these games with these mm-hmm. people. That's a lot to live with, day in, day out, because. In words, your, your father can- doesn't even drink. He don't even smoke, he never drank and never smoked a cigarette. So that he didn't he didn't need to numb himself. He just was because he's a criminal. Yeah, but he wasn't <laughs> until the age of thirty. <laughs> he wasn't fucking with Eddie, fucking with the big man though. You know, once he but but you know as you said we they have to read the book. I think that big one man incident, on campus link, or link Motown below. Mafia. Motown Mafia. That incident with pops when he was a square and was uh, driving the bus. During the riots. So yeah, okay. So let's let's now we're gonna go back to 1967, yeah. Detroit riot. Your dad has made it to the age of 30, being a total law-abiding citizen. Not only has he not sold any drugs, he never even saw any because he wasn't he hanging never, around people doing. He never drugs. saw drugs till he was 30 years old. And so the riot happens. Your father is a, a DSR. Uh, so that's what Detroit public transportation, right? And he's he's a bus driver, but he's kind of like a union steward. He's a steward. He's a big shot in the little bus driving community. <laughs> and for yeah. at that time, for a black male, I mean, he kind of was getting towards that ceiling of what they were going to let him do. Oh, he was about there. I mean, he could have took maybe the union could have took him a little bit, a little higher. more higher, but not bit. much. No. So comfortable, but a blue collar, hard working life. And yeah. what what happened? Tell us about that incident. Um, the riots are occurring. Um, and he's it, transporting prisoners. He's literally. He's participating he, in the American system. He is helping the military. He's taking prisoners to Belle Isle. He's also driving around the National Guard. He's doing, he's the square square. Mm-hmm. And he's got his wife, my mom, shout out to mom, my sister, shout out to. Uh, sister. My sister. <laughs> um, and um, the same Soldiers that he is transporting around when he's working, he's off work now, but still in bus driver uniform. And they get pulled over telling him about he's out past curfew. They knew, it, like, it was the same soldiers? Not the same soldiers. But, but when I said, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they, they, they like, pulled guns on him, put guns all in the car with his Were wife and kids. Oh, was, oh it was, was old family. Old family. I was, but I can't remember. I was 68. I was uh, four years old. Yeah. I was four years old when that happened. 67. Yeah, 67. So, um, and he's like, wait a minute. I'm the good guy. I'm one of the good guys. And this is, and I'm getting, you guys are putting your guns on me and, and threatening me and cussing at me in front of my family and waving guns all around. And this is what happens by playing by the rules. And when we psychoanalyze uh, the professor, the field marshal, that was the day I think he said, fuck the rules and all this because this don't make no sense I've been right my whole life I never broke the law and you do this to me in front of my family and he ain't been a law abiding since, <laughs> since or had, until, until until the last you know 12 years yeah. uh, since he got out yeah, yeah. um it can traumatize you yeah 
traumatize you. And then... Um, and that's when the, the the events of Motown Mafia began to occur. 18 months later, this man has met um, John Claxton and, like, is getting to it. And he, when his man is like, if you want to come fuck with me. And, um, well, well. and yeah, the rest becomes Motown Mafia. But you were, you were headed somewhere with the YBI thing before we backtracked. Okay, so, yeah, so now... So now we're going to backtrack to Eddie Sr. So, so your dad, they keep him into 84, and then he gets out and he gets into his Bahamian cocaine thing, which right. is another story. Right. Uh, right. But Eddie gets out in 83. Yeah, March 83. And oddly enough, so here's, it's funny, one degree of separation in Detroit, and I mean, I mean I'm certainly was a low-level criminal, but I was nobody, but oddly enough, my best friend in middle school, who I met, he came back from... And you lived not far from Eddie's building. Yep. Oh, and my father grew up in Eddie's building. That's his, cool. his grandparents were the managers of yeah. it, which we talk about in the clip. Yeah. But, so my best friend, he was black, but his mother had uh, three sons with a Mexican guy named Canales... And I remember when I met my friend, he was like, yeah, I just came back from oddly like Wyoming or Colorado. They had some relative out there. He was like, yeah, my mother was in prison for a heroin conspiracy. But the guy in the conspiracy was Richard Canales, and that was Eddie's conspiracy. So take us about how uh, so Eddie gets out. The y, YBI, the in, first indictment hit, but of course, well, that was before the they laws were got really draconian. So there was still going on. People had gotten in and gotten out. I mean, YBI was still in effect. They and, were just coming in when that because. But it, not everyone went in, and then some had already gotten out, and you know. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. So right. so so what was Eddie's run, and how does it tie in with your with your? Well, I know him to Pep. Um, Shout and, out to uh, Mr. Cooper. What up? And, and what up? Brett and all I'll that. let you, man. Pop, come on, man. Can't get, get on the pie with us. I'm just saying, man. We got to. I, I need you. I, yeah, people be talking crazy, but don't. You know, you got a great story, man. You need to come holler at your man. Holler at Al. He promised us, actually, Al. Last time we talked to you, he, you know, he did. Okay, okay. He did. He promised us. It's been a long. He didn't, he didn't give us a time. Man, when I mentioned <laughs> Pep's name to Benzine. No. Now, to show you the power of the YBI thing, I was in Atlanta years ago. And I was interviewing Benzino. And uh, Kavari was like, oh, yeah, it's my man's from Detroit, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he, pe- uh, Benzino just says something, you know, people reference comedy. He's like, oh, yeah, why be yeah, something? And I was like, uh, he's like, I was like, from Boston, uh, did you know Pep and him? And Brett? And he was like, he looked at me like he saw a ghost. He was like, how the hell do you, you know, know who the Pep is? Yeah. And then, so that kicked off a thing where they've been, they did a bunch of parties, the Columbus. <laughs> The, what was it called in Boston? It was the Columbus Crew. Yeah, yeah. And that's who YBI messed with. Brett and them went out there. And that was Eddie's bag, probably, right? Okay. Or Well, one of them, the big one, because, okay, so let me, let me get, let's get to Eddie's bag, how it gets yeah. to Boston, right? Yeah. So Eddie locked up again with all, all these cast of Detroit characters that were all at Milan, say, between 82 and 88. One of them, also was a guy by the name of Richard Wakefield. Mm, whose wife, oh, that's, that's quite a story, whose wife disappeared after the Thailand thing, but that's another story. Okay, right, so, right. So they're in Milan. Eddie and Wake then put together a scheme. Wake got, Wake. Is that involving Canales or that came later? That, that's how he ends up getting to oh, Canales. okay. Right, so Wakefield has got a plug to bring the shit out of Thailand. That's gag, 90% hook up. Number him and Eddie, are, I mean, yeah, yeah. Number four. Number four. Dragon Pro, number four. As 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 Doc Davis taught us, take the number. He said, take a kilo of the number four yeah. and a kilo of the um. Number three crude. From from Turkey. Yeah. yeah. And mix them together yeah. and give you the hit and the hold. The hit and the hold and uh, Doc, well, Doc Master, Doc Master, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's it. They get a hit and the hold because people always complain, right? That the channel white gonna get to get on high as a kite. Go away. But it go away. Right? The Turkish isn't. Gonna hold, gonna keep them level, but it ain't gonna never get them to that yeah. euphoria that so they, they look for. So putting it together. And then, there, yeah, there you go. So anyway, Wake and Eddie come out. They plot and Wakefield's still in jail. Eddie come home. Boom. Through a whole bunch of stuff that we have to go all the way through how Eddie is, ends up on Dexter, his aunt's dating. It, well, the short, short version of it, Eddie's auntie, God rest her soul, Lisa, 
is dating a guy, Jabba the Hutt. What up, Tracy? Shout out to Jabba the Hutt, Tracy, who lives across the street from Mr. Cooper. Tracy Sledge? Tracy Sledge. Okay. Who lives across the street from Mr. Cooper, right? Pep. Pep. Um, bunch of childhood mischief we already in before the big man come home. But when the big man... Which involves Demetrius Halloween. Huh? Oh, no, that came later. Demetrius came later. Yeah. Who was also in Milan with this cast of characters, but no. So... Tracy and, and and Pep and all them guys, Brett and them running around that neighborhood when Eddie Old Man come. And those guys were the foot. Those were the little kids, or not little kids, but the young guys that were the ones running the spots for YBI. When you look Pep at and Brett were the guys dock. who were 14 with the stacks of money like that in 81, 82. They're the real YBI. I mean, that, yeah. they, they, he, Pep original. Yeah. Original. Yeah. Brett, is it in from your doc? Um, Sydney rest Dover, in peace. Rest in peace. Definitely rest in peace. When he say original YBI, that ain't no overstatement. No. That's, that's factual. Um. So through this n nexus, Eddie Old Man basically like, you've been doing some slick shit where I've been locked up anyway, but that's a whole different issue. Oh, the weed and the hair you know, right. So this slick shit that you've been doing, and Eddie just was talking about it on his on his show the other day. He's like, I did Eddie's old man. It got me kind of drunk, and I kind of, I kind of folded under wine pressure. I like Eddie tore up the car and. He's been taking the dope from Treacherous and he's been giving it to those guys on Dexter. Oh, <laughs> you did. You, you told. I didn't really. Treacherous really had told, but it all happened. The, the big man got to it all in one night because, like, Treacherous was over there at the house and he told more about that. I really just kind of confirmed that. Cooperating with I, I was a cooperator. I was a cooperator. The big man, big man, he, he took a different. He was the good cop. You want another glass of wine, Junior? Yeah. <laughs> what exactly you and Eddie Baby been what you and Eddie Baby been doing now? Uh, Cause Treacherous was saying some things and I'm trying to figure out what exactly been going on since I've been away. But anyway, so Eddie Baby when he come back is old man like you've been up to some real slick shit. But but long story short, who moving all this shit you've been getting? He said them boys off Dexter. Tracy and them, because Tracy is doing some shit with a guy named Gene Hackman. Oh, not his original YBI, too. Who Hackman is, Hackman running a guy named Maurice Bale's bag. Maurice Bale oh, yeah, yeah. is Butch Jones's nephew. So, Hacky working for He had, like, a Rolls Royce and all that back then. Yeah, them, them niggas, whatever you want to say, I think them niggas ran up the bag. Yeah. I mean, whatever, you know, different size, different camps, but... Credit must be given where credit is due. Those guys ran up the bag. They that that they did. Um, so, but Detroit, small city. You got <laughs> anyway. So Tracy, they get. It's not that it's small. There's only so many people doing that level yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So Eddie explains to his father that what we've been doing is these young boys got a big bag over there and they're getting stupid money, and but we got a insider inside they click. So we just been putting our bundles. With mm -hmm. their bundles, but the fiends is coming back saying they like our dope better than they like because they'll be like, We want that other shit y'all had. Mm -hmm. And now, luckily, the only person who knew why they were saying that was, was Hacky because Gene Hackman got rested. So, um, oh, he passed. He did pass. I saw him at the gas station. Well, that was been uh, 10 years Cousin ago. Cousin Rhonda was just here. Yeah, yeah, nah. Oh, that's his people? Yes, his people. Yeah. You know, all Cascade, all Winter oh, Walter. Oh, he's from Winter Walter. Walter. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 all that. Um, so Eddie old man like, well, them niggas want some action. Eddie Baby told you, said, to be honest, Pops, them niggas dying for some action. They mm. begging for some action. He introduced, he's like. Because oh. they're in the rem, the, the white, the Butch and them are in the prison at this point. Butch in jail by now. But it, that had just happened. So they had this massive street presence, this machine, so you need something to feed, feed the, machine. the machine. So that's the desperate, they're. Who got kilo? Because they can do kilo every couple days or if something. It's good. They, that, they had to click. They had the infrastructure to make it happen. So they run through multiple kilos a week in dimes. So they need someone they can feed it. So Eddie's saying he go get he get Tracy and to lose Tracy to the big man. Tracy and the big man get to talking. He like and and Tracy now is dating Eddie's sister in law. Yeah. Eddie's sister-in-law, Lisa, that rest of So, 
Tracy like, but really, I'm going to tell you, man, for the what you're looking for and the kind of action you're trying to move, it's my man We need you need to talk to. And he's talking about Pat. Pat, this all happened a few days. Pat ended up getting introduced to the big man. You know, Oh, I, Pat, I, has, uh, we got the link to the, his book, Born. Uh, Bound by Honor, Torn, torn by, by Greed. Greed. Great book. Great book, great read. Um, you know, just feed. I mean, this guy, Pat, just not to pressure you to. He's hustled with Raymond Peoples, Butch Jones, WW, and Eddie Jackson. His resume That's is YBI and and then some. And then the big man. Yeah. Right? He he's seen a lot. He's seen a lot. So the first yeah, the first And lived it looks good, lived to tell about it, reputation and tag. Nice reputation guy. type, nice guy, family just Shout out to his son, Luxury Mark. Just saw him actually at the book fair. They got some great YBI t shirts. Oh, he's selling wine too. Um, Luxury wine. He's got a niece that's an author, he's doing some good work there in the um, urban publishing world. So, yeah, shout out to the whole family over there, the Cooper family and them. Um, so, Eddie Old Man give him 50 quarters. He tells he tells the big man. Um, so, it's like seven ounces. Seven times. Oh, no. no 50. No, no. That's 50 times seven. Each quarter is seven. Oh, four. That's 11 or 12. It's half 12 a brick, ounces. right? Yeah, 12 ounces. Half, almost half a brick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost half a brick. And yeah, 12 and a half ounces. Pep tells the big man, I'm taking this to Boston. The big man's response is, I don't care if you take it to the movie, just bring my money. Just bring back my bread. Because they could probably, what, make double, triple. So that's where Benzino and them talking about Pep and the Columbus, Boston, Columbus the crew. crew. Yeah, or Columbus dogs, or Columbus point dogs or something. But Pep run through the bag so quick in Boston. Was like, Brett in charge of the crew or Pep was in charge of the crew? In Boston yeah. or? In Boston. To my knowledge, and I, so anybody, if I'm wrong, please forgive me. I, I only know Pep. Pep had the bag. I only know Pep. Oh, but, uh, 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 Brett so, went with WW. So now that, that sounds about right. had another bag. That sounds about right. Oh, yeah. Because by this time, WW got rest so it's, it's already passed. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, so, oh, the bo- that's what it was. The Boston pipeline was already set up. From WW. Because WW and Brett. So they already had the people out there. So now Egg. they just, Brett probably took Pep back out there and was like, this is another guy from Detroit. I think in Pep's book, he says it was WW that took him to Boston. But when he went back that. with Eddie's stuff. WW was dead. It was already dead, yeah. So that was, yeah, okay. So he already had his own, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, and Brett probably went back out. But oh, he, Brett might have been in prison for that shooting and did Exactly, yeah. A lot happened. <laughs> it was a lot. This town, boy, this <clears throat> town. Um, but then Pep decided he don't need to go back to Boston no more with the quality of that, of that skag that they was getting. And he set and up And that's the Richard Canales stuff to go back no, to. No, no, no. Oh, that's yeah, Wakefield. That's Wakefield. Okay. Um, he set up shop headquartered over off Nyron Park. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's that Dexter, yeah. Yeah, and um, Pep Grand doing, River Livernoy. Pep, Pep doing fifty thousand a day. You know, I only got I got the residual. I'm driving Eddie over there a lot of times to pick up and the money. And who was trying to? And there was a lot of attempts on Pep's life. Who was that? Was I that, won't get I won't get into that. But basically, oh, him that, and Butch, him and Butch, the long story, much documented. Yeah, yeah. Him and Butch had fell out, okay. and there was a whole lot of but there was violence. a. Numerous uh, attempts, on numer- side, numerous. But he 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 got through it, and he was he was turning the money in. When it comes to with the, with Eddie, who was I picking mean, up the money? Eddie did, did you ever? Oh, Eddie. all the time. That's what I'm saying. I we were because the meeting spot would be Tracy's parents' house there on Leslie, mm-hmm. which is one of the nice blocks. Very nice block. Very still. nice block. Still to this day. Yeah. Um, so every day he was turning. I know. I mean, I ain't telling people what I think because you might. I sometimes was, you were there. Three, four times yeah. out the week. Yeah, yeah. Three, four times out the and week. That's seven yeah. days with heroin. That's seven days a week. Yeah. Um, and that lasts. So 300000 a week. So that's over a million a month. Easy. Oh, I remember I said Pep and Big Steve, shout out to Five. They had, they threw a great Christmas party that year to, to celebrate <laughs> to celebrate the, the fruits of their life. And at this point, these guys are, what, 22 or something? At, at most. At most. Okay. At most. Because if we're 17, 18, they're a few years older than us. 20. <laughs> they might not even be 21. Right? Wakefield people eventually, though, some tragedy shit happened. One of the mules on the way back from Thailand, balloon bus, or they, I think they, I think, don't quote me on this, either the balloon bust inside of them on their way back from Thailand. Oh, no, you said she was getting high. Or she tried to throw up, or she threw up one of the balloons to, to, to get high. 
and she dies on the plane. And that was the the cover story was it was like a black church, church excursion, excursion women yeah, exactly. going to Thailand missionary worship and they swallow a bunch. Each one of them would swallow a brick. A pound. You can swallow a pound. A pound, half brick. Yeah. So yeah. they had done that multiple times. Multiple. Okay. For a two year run. Eighteen months. Oh, they going every couple months. Yeah. Two months. Yeah. So they had probably done it fifteen times or twelve times or something. Ten times. So when the woman dies they arrest, of course, everybody on the plane who's with the church group. And the wife disappears. Which is Marion Wakefield included. But she makes bond. In the wind. She gets in the wind. But um, husband goes to the pen. No, he ain't even out the pen. Richard Wakefield's still in jail. Did he get a case? Or because he, he, she disappeared, it cut off the tie to it him. It cut off the tie to him. And, and the she best, uh, best never re- was seen again? Best report we got, she left for about five, about five million. And when did he get out? Wake would end up getting out late eighties. A few years later, did no, he, we did, was already on French Road then. Did so he? 90, oh, 90. Did 90s. he hook back up with her? Or you don't know. No, I, I mean she never. She surfaced. Did, she did the Frank Matthews, John Claxton. Oh, so she didn't. She she kept hubby from getting in trouble, but she also she took that five million and went ghost. I guess you can't blame her, but no, I mean she, that's that was that was a smart play. That was the play. That was the play. So now, it's but a now high level game. Now, so and, for those so of you, the, so the, 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 those of you, so mystified about Frank Matthews, you know, to be operating at that level, like your father was a great father to you, but if a situation would have occurred where he had to disappear and not contact you guys, he would have done it because what's the point of contacting you if it's just going to make all of you go to jail? It, right, I mean, but this is where, and, and rightfully so, the people who ain't in this world, but just sort of get some insights from those in the world. There could be situations where I love my family, but I can't fuck with my family because this thing has gone sideways, and all I can do is hurt you guys by trying and to, yourself and myself by trying to show how much love, yeah. how much love I got for you. So it just so being, Frank Mathers is far from the only person that did that. He's the most famous two just right here in Detroit, John Claxon. And Marion Wakefield. Wakefield. And that was know. a big op. And that was more recent. That was 85 or something. 85, 80. Marion got in the win with 5 million. Wow. And um, what age would she have been roughly at that time? Was she your mother's age? Right. Ish? So she would have probably been in her mid 50s. Okay. Or but they, late, and they late, had been late. in the game forever. Since the 70s. If you read some of those. Um, so they, articles, so she had been in the game since she was 35 or she was 20 years deep or something. They all, you know, they kin with Felix. Probably you 60s. know, they family with Felix Walls. This whole family, that whole family, heavy hitters. He's he's out, right? Felix home. Got have to, you seen to a big, him? Or I have he not. At? Last Michigan? I heard, he was in Wisconsin. Oh, did his daughter uh, ever want to do something? Well, we'll talk about that. Next. Yeah, yeah, but shout out to a true whale, whale, Felix Walls. But yeah, Walls and Wakefields is all family. Oh, okay. Um. So yeah, the family is just is heavy hitters. But now the big man got a problem. We he's got, got this machine. Right, but we ain't got no. Work. We, we got no night. And we got, a, we got a factory and employees, but no car parts to assemble. And it's Eddie Jackson. He won't buy anything if he can't get it. He didn't dealt with. He only dealt with John Claxton, the Gambino family, and now. Oh, the Westie. Oh no, that was that was your dad. Or, and then now Wake the Field Thailand. In Thailand. So you're talking about all ninety proof plus connects. Just coming untouched. Untouched. He won't. The world is sending him samples because a lot of people want to hustle with him. He'd be like, I can't fuck with it. That's he don't want to get nothing that's come into town already. No, He's exactly. Getting it from the from foreign s- entry point. From source. He sent um, a guy. Oh fuck! I guess it's indictment. I believe his name. I believe it's a guy named Al Finch who was um, on the original indictment with those guys in the seventy. Al Finch. Oh, on the on your day on the the big thirty two yeah, man yeah, indictment. Yeah. He then went down to um, Mexico. Mexico. See, white guy, black guy, okay. and talked to Richard Canales. How did he meet him? Also in jail. Oh. I think they was all in love. So Canales world. was a Mexican national. Yeah. Okay. Um, because wonder when he had him he, and Eddie were cellmates in Leaven, Leavenworth. He must have had those kids with her because they were older than my friend. He must have had those kids with her in the seventies before he got whatever sent him in. When he met them, did he probably had the kids with her before that. Yeah, he had to, right? Yep. Had to, yeah, already had yeah. to, made the kids. Yep. So. Because uh, they grew up in Chicago. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. 
Al go talk to Canales because they know. Shout out they, to Earl. Shout, my shout guy. Out, yeah. And um, Canales, like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Basically, I guess Al felt he was getting spent. And Canales said. And this is in Mexico. This is in Mexico. Canales said, well, what's happening with my old bunkie, Eddie? Say, yeah. I can. Well, they were in level. Level yeah. words was nasty. Well, that's back when they only had like Leavenworth, six, seven, Marion, Atlanta, Atlanta Lewisburg. Right. Yeah. Milan. But that wasn't a USP. That was an FCI. That was a medium. Mil, mil, yeah. That was a medium. But all those other ones we're talking about are USPs. We, Leavenworth was? Penitentiary. As opposed to a correctional institute. So they were max. Leavenworth, Atlanta, Lewisburg, Mary. Those were top level, right? Yep. And then they're added, oh, Lompoc. Terry Mary, Hart. Terry Hart and Lompoc. Yeah. Those were the six max security. So they started your dad off in Atlanta, Eddie and Leavenworth. They didn't let them be together. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then your dad, when he was getting ready to come home, they broke him down to oh, the to to medium, to the mile. Yeah. Okay. And the same with Eddie. FCI, yeah. Federal Correctional Institute. Yeah. I just learned something after all these years with all these criminals. I never knew. Oh no, I had to figure that. I mean, uh, yeah, the U, the the max securities are you. So if you see Tara Hutt USP, even though I guess now that's some type of snitch there, or I don't know, but uh, Atlanta USP, Lompoc USP, then the, now they got Victimville, like, Victorville, aka like, Victimville USP yeah. out in California, <laughs> where all the Serenios are at. But um. Uh, and then you have the Federal Correctional Institute, which is Milan and other, the medium and lows. Huh. So, I'll come back, tell Eddie, you know, I saw your bunkie, Canales. I think, I know he doing something, but he ain't really trying to holler at me like that. He didn't know him or just, just whatever. They knew him, but like, Not like, that. like, like that. Not to engage in an international but he was narcotics like, conspiracy. It, right, he was like, but he asked about you kind of like, What's up with him? You should tell your man to holler at him. I'll trust him. Eddie holler at them. They put it together. They get to, they they get a sample in. Now this would have been Mexican mud or This was mud, but it was right. How, how? I think ninety I think it was still taken a ninety. So that would have been maybe similar to the Turkish stuff? Yeah, it's a brown. I think people's problem with making and I'll be honest, I never dealt with it. Is it like harder to like, shoot up or something? I mean, like, did it get, when that was being sold, was it in a bag as powder or it was gummy? It was kind of gummy. So you couldn't problem. snort it. it well, no, nah, you could still work How with many it. I mean, I've seen people at a hookup table with it. It's the same process oh, and it's still It's just same. a little more process. It's just, it's a How lot. How many people is a little side? Like, I, I mean, you weren't hanging out with the users, I guess, but like, what, back then, I mean, was everybody shooting it or were they smoking it, snorting it or? Had to be pretty strong. If you put once you put all that cut on it, you had to shoot it. I uh, I would still say to this day, well, but on this phenomenon of fentanyl, that the heroin customer base always been about 50 50 snorter oh, shooters. Oh, okay. Do you do you graduate all or or I guess well I guess it's like cocaine and crack. Some people never graduate to the other form. Well, two people because shooting up that's got to be that moment in a drug addict's life. Where you the needles hovering over your arm and you're like, oh, this is another. There are people snorting heroin who've been snorting it for years and you never and, knew it. And they never jumped up to. They never, yeah, and they, they, they. But you gotta be in a city where it, it's still gotta be a little more pure. Yes, I mean, like the stuff you sell on French Road, you can snort. Yeah, I'm gonna say half the people there on French Road was definitely snorting it. Okay. And 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 that's how they, some of those guys were able to keep their jobs at the plant for thirty oh, years. No, I know. Now listen, I know <laughs> many of my friends. Mother five, you know. Yeah. Well, you um, know, like, Detroit is a place, if you're an addict, probably for 50, 60 years, you never had, I mean, if you really were a real, like, Detroit resident, maybe if you're a suburbanite and you only knew one place to get it, you might go bowl for a few days, but uh, if you're a Detroit <laughs> resident, nah, you could always get it. You could always get a blow. Yeah. You could always get a blow in this town. And actually, for a long time in this town, not only could you get a blow, you could get a first-class blow because... Mm -hmm. Despite like all the money that we're talking about, this particular circle of ours was that's just one circle. That's just one circle. There's five other circles moving the crowd at the same pace. You know what I mean? So you know this town. You you know well. So Eddie and Canales hook up. Canales get them to test it, test to come back right. Then unfortunately, did um, they get any loads in? No, because Tracy and Pep, when they went, they got popped. Oh, they went to pick it up. They went to pick From it up. From where? 
uh, Tulsa. Again, Pepper oh, details I all see this. That that Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma was was the drop off. Uh, man, to be even now, guys, I know say, oh, "I'm getting on the road to such and such." I always think, like, man, like you're young black males from Detroit. They were marked before the feds had already. But I mean, it's just they look out of place. Yeah. And then what? You got to drive from Tulsa to Detroit. Yep. Of course, back then the feds, <laughs> the, already, the, the, they, the roads weren't full of police like they are now. I guess they had bugged Eddie's 500 SEC. Oh, they were and expecting. Bugged all, oh, did they get hot from the first run? With with Wayfield? This is still a question that we are all not sure about. Or they just big. Or it's probably very easy to get a tap on him. Eddie, a ju- all the judges has to right, agree to. Right. Him. Eddie had got one little brief run in between Wakefield people getting popped and him starting with Richard Canales. He was dealing with this Eastern Market crew. Old Italians. Man, yeah, old man, old man Simon and this guy Fat Joe. Old man Simon like go back like with Sam Norber and them Purple Gang. Oh, shit. Sam Norber. Okay. Right. Um, Sam and they, Norber. They not sure whether they got hot. Dealing with them. Dealing with them or from the first run. Because the Detroit mob, the Eastern Market specifically, had that huge numbers case. And the way they got them is they bugged a whole block. It was something cutting edge for the FBI at the time. I talked about this in Detroit Mob Confidential. Okay. Shout out to Scott Bernstein. Shout out, they, Scott. <laughs> Holla at you, man. They bug, he's in Youngstown doing some mob oh, stuff. He'll be okay. back Wednesday, so okay. we'll see him. Yeah. So they bugged a whole block outside. So those guys would go, they would either go in the in the freezer to talk or they would go outside, like on the open street. And for those not from Detroit, Eastern Market uh, still is the area where they're like the wholesale produce yeah, vendor. Yeah. So if you have a Kroger supermarket and you need 700 pounds of carrots, like that stuff is there. Yeah. You need 40 sheep chopped up, that stuff is there. Lobsters are there. Yeah, so it's a huge... Uh, you know, if you're Market. from New York or Chicago or something, it's like whatever you have there, like the... the, the meat district in New York. Meat and vegetable district. Yeah. And a lot of mob activity. And they bugged a whole block. And that led to the last black Italian, at least, indictment for numbers. I'm sure... Well, I don't know what went on after that, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, uh, Shout out to Carl Martin. We have to get Carl back on the pod. We did yeah. good work. With oh, and, I want to interview Martin, him. Yeah. One of his last, uh, one so, of the last big number men in the city. So yeah, they bugged old black. Yeah, right. So to to your point, who knows? They could have because that hot. Easter market was always because they had been running out of there forever. And like just like your dad, the mob guys, it's like, well, yeah, you know, we're the mafia in Detroit, and we operate out of Easter market, so it is what it is. And we know you're down here, and we got to still do what we're doing. So maybe they did get hot from that. That's what we, I mean. That sounds didn't make sense. That's what, yeah, it, it, the way it played out, it looked like Eddie and them had got hot before the sample got from Canales, which means, you're right, it came up. Because they were on it immediately. They was all over them. So they marked the car. Um, they knew from the wiretap that Pep and them was taking a Renault. And, and, just, and to show you, yeah, and to show you how fucked up it is. Black Butch, shout out to uh, Black Butch, shout out to the Black Dispatch. He ends up getting on this indictment, not because he's even involved, because Butch is doing something on his own. Mm. But the car is bugged, and Eddie say, Butch, do me a favor and rent a car. Oh, and that's the car they got hit. How much time did Butch have to do? On that bullshit? Yeah. Like 18 months, two years. Okay, well, that ain't too bad. But But they could have, he lucky, he probably had lucky... And that's how him and Pep met was going to jail on that same. Oh, he didn't even know them. He didn't even know them. That's what I'm saying. He didn't even know them. He Pep rented got, them a car, though. He rented them the car. and. Um, but that's the game. Like, And people might think, like, well, why wouldn't you get a stranger to rent a car? But what stranger? What's her, what stranger and why would Like, I who's going to rent a car? And then, and then anyone who's not in your inner circle but who's in the street and is like, oh, Eddie Jackson wants me to rent a car for a YBI kid to Some drive out of state. Oh, I want it. I, I want I, in. I'm gonna follow him and rob him or something. That's some yeah. bullshit, yeah, right? Yeah. So, but the feds marked the car because I believe Pepin them picked up the car right up there at Leslie and Dexter. Is there a at, car right by deal, that. A car rental place on Dexter. No, no, no. I said they dropped. Oh. Eddie. Oh, he Junior put, rented dropped, it and brought it there. Yeah, and um. I don't think Brent, or Eddie Jr. I think actually dropped the rental off. But it was in Butch's name. But it was Butch's name, right? And um, they the feds put the infrared shit where they could track the car with the helicopter. 
Oh, that was cutting edge for them. So, so they they was on. They were using they, the new, the they new was, technology. They was on Pep and Tracy about when they left out. They followed them the whole. And what way. did they go pick up? How much? Or you don't know. Um, it wasn't actually that. That she wasn't was even 20. the run. That oh, wasn't. Oh, even, that wasn't even the big run. I think they were picking up like just a few ounces. Oh, just to just to, to uh, like a larger sample, baby. A larger sample. Oh, so they didn't get uh, so. Actually, they didn't get. They Tracy's. Shout out to HUD again. Um, from the way the story's been recounted by yeah. numerous people and in his book and trade. Born by honor, torn by grief. Um, Bound by honor, torn by grief. He survived the pat down all the way to the Fed building. And oh, actually, I think he had a couple ounces on him. On him. And some kind of way on their way in the Fed building, he threw the shit in the trash can. He was able to finagle and actually, so it, they never found any dope. They never found any. Dope. So what was the case? Was it a big? Had they discussed kilos or like what was the? The conspiracy. But of how much? Um, or they the, the kilo deal. Oh, but they, they didn't even get a kilo. They never got. They never got no dope. Well, oh, I mean they they picked it up, but it was only a few ounces. They didn't even. The pick feds up a kilo. never got in possession. Right. No, I understand, but they they didn't even pick up a kilo. Correct. So how much time did every... Oh, Eddie got kind of slammed. Eddie got nailed. Um, but he was still on parole. Yes. So, so they're still, like... Yeah. That was a double problem. So he still had all that tail oh, from right. the first case. So back Plus then, the you could... Feds, you got out after about a third of the time, but you had the tail. You had the tail. So he still had all the tail from the first case. And the new case wasn't even that bad. Wasn't even that if bad. If he had waited, he was off parole, but that wasn't his steal. No, 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 no. But he ended up... That's how he was gonna be out, able to get out by ninety five because the tail time was gone, and then they actually had been able to overturn. The feds had a really fucked up case. Come on, no dope, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. So ten, so Eddie did about ten years, but he died. In so what, but seven, eighty seven. He died. No, he died in ninety five. Oh, he died in ninety five. Oh, um, so Eddie Junior gets indicted. His father gets indicted. Mom gets indicted. Auntie gets indicted for fucking answering the phone with Richard Canales on the phone. Richard Canales calls over to the building. Eddie's mom or your mom? Eddie's mom. Eddie's mom. Don't say that. Mom will fucking kill me. No. My mother's never been to prison. Never been <laughs> fucking upstanding business. No, I know she had. But no, no, no. I know. I, I didn't know if somehow they just She tried, was traumatized tried. when they put in the newspaper uh, back in the 70s. Eddie Jackson around a 5 old here <laughs> caught driving Teresa Brown's El Dorado in Pennsylvania pulled over. Oh, with, that's right. That was her car. That was her car. For more on that story, watch Motown <laughs> Monica. <laughs> yeah. She was like, why they put my name in the paper with that bullshit? Well, they want to put the pressure on the family. I mean, that's, it's funny now having read about so many cases and knowing from the perspective of if I was a federal agent, I would want to put pressure. I'd put everyone's name just because it adds to the chance that one of those people will be like, oh, y'all got me mixed up in this. I'm telling because I didn't I didn't know. I didn't sign up for this. I, I tell you. So, yeah. And then Pap Tracy, Black Butch, uh, Cohen, the lawyer. Oh, the lawyer guy? Dave Rice, the owner of Packer Pontiac, because Eddie had bought so many cars from Packer Pontiac. How, what did they indict the lawyer for? The accountant. That's the lawyer. Oh, accountant. You said the accountant. Okay. Yeah, okay. The accountant. Um, Dave Rice, the owner of Packer Pontiac. Eddie had bought so many cars from Packer Pontiac once he got out. And he had been buying cars from Dave Rice in the 70s before he went. They said Eddie Jackson's got to have an interest in this car dealership. How many cars is He's, he was like, no, he just buys a lot of cars from me. <laughs> and we got a relationship for for multiple years. So, and then and there was and, a basketball. And Richard, there was and a, Richard Canales. There was a basketball player involved because the way I came across when I called you and was like, didn't you say the name in the case was Canales? And you said, yeah. And I said, you know, that was my best friend's stepfather's name. And I was uh, reading Sports Illustrated. And it was a story about. It was like a Detroit basketball player who like messed his life up with drugs. And he was in that, he was somehow in that case. I don't remember his name. I'll, I'll find somebody. it on the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, 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 you know, he, maybe that was, Al, who was Al Finch? Al Finch was some guy who hustled with them back in the 70s. It was. Now he might have been. I don't know if he had a basketball history. It's possible. Might have been. Yeah, it was. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up because it was some. Guy that could have went to the NBA, but you drug, blah blah blah. Like, and, it and that's been. how I, I don't, came across I don't the story. Know that, but it's that's very. I'm gonna, possible. I'm gonna find that story. It's very possible. So then they indict Canales too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Was he in? 
Oh, he was in Mexico. Well, let's see. We let's see because we are live here on the block at the studio. He was in Mexico, so we can yeah we can wrap they, up. Yeah, they tried to. Um, Eddie beat the case in Mexico. What about did they extradite Richard Canales? Yeah, I think Canales ended up doing. Um, well, he did his time in Mexico. Oh, yeah. that didn't even come. But Eddie beat the case in Mexico, and as soon as he walked out the courthouse in Mexico. Oh, he went. They took him to Mexico. They took him to Mexico. They was really trying to. They wanted him to have to do his time in the Mexican prison. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> we told we told we told some stories. I think actually I do want to go since I'll be here. We'll go. I want to do this. Uh, Cartier clothing thing and Detroit. Remember, we went to Lower House. Yeah, yeah, we should do the history of French Road. Yeah, we'll do that. So, yeah. okay, so American Dope, Al Profit, go get uh, Bomb by Honor, Torn by Gree, go get Rich, a uh, big man on campus. campus. And Motown Mafia. Motown Mafia, and watch Motown Mafia. On Tubi, Amazon Prime. All that. Motown Mafia, Memoirs of a Kingpin's Kid, available at Amazon and on Kindle. And it, all you Detroiters. He's gonna be. He's finishing up this uh, location here. It's gonna be a whole Mota- home Motown Center, Mafia podcast. Hollywood, Seven Mile Hollywood. Getting Seven Mile together. Hollywood. For y'all should ask somebody. Your man putting it down Good with time. the guidance. Let me tell you though. Let me tell you so. And I, I always want to say this. You know, me, me and Al started met as he was premiering Roland. Um, AKA City of Dope. And now, yeah, City of Dope. YouTube man. Um, your growth of your channel and what people don't know, this man grinds. Your hustle and your work. Well, I was ethic. making them things by either by yeah. myself or my friend Brian that showed yeah. up. At best, I had and him. And your work ethic. That's all he gets you. That's, that's all that work gets you there. It's com- is yeah more more. Than this was when people weren't used to people being outside <laughs> no. with a video camera. With a video yeah. camera. Not on the blocks not I on, was on. Not on Cascade. <laughs> No. You still Cascade, they, cam- no. they wasn't camera friendly. No, nah, they yeah. barely are now. <laughs> like, this is Detroit. This, this is, people still not with the camera activities. Yeah, you know, we, yeah, we was down at the Brewster's. They was like, Junior, we love you. We'll get them up on camera. Right yeah, because it's yeah. unsolved. Yeah. Hey, it's still, it's <laughs> still it's, unsolved mystery. Yeah, we're down at the uh, Brewster's. That's what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, some, of, oh, some of the OGs was like, boy, we love you, but you know, to get that camera. The cameras make that camera. Really it's easy. still unsolved mysteries in this city. Yeah, it is. So, um. So yeah, we about to really lay out this Motown Mafia podcast studio here. Yeah, working on um, Motown Mafia too. Mo- I'm for real. We've been saying that, but the band about to get put back together. You say Scotty be back uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. So I'm. Te- and he's in town. So like the three of you can kind of put it together, and I'll just be the, the technical advisor. We should do that. We can all break up the bread. Get my and and, mom, and on this and on this note, so we've been doing business now for over a decade. Never no issues, no qualms, not. There never has to. Listen, I always tell people, I don't even get in arguments. I'm in a whole nother city and made some new friends that people in that city don't, don't deal do with. It. You see what I'm saying? It's just, you don't do the kind of things that make people mad. Yeah, that's that true. doesn't there mean, you that doesn't mean you bow down or you're some type of sucker. It just means, hey, do we're, doing, we're doing this, we're doing this. Yeah. yeah. You and mean what, do what you say and say what you mean? mean what yep. you say what you mean? Yep. And then when, when everyone involved has an uh, impeccable reputation, then when there is little problems and someone says, oh no, the money got messed up, so that's why I only sent you that, the person just says, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that. That's, okay. that's that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's that. That's yeah. that. Brother Lou. Yeah. So, I yeah, like American you, Dope. American, American Dope. American big Dope. Boss. American Dope Big Boss doing what they do. That's right. Again, shout out to all the family out there. Uh, if you guys are checking this out, if you don't, if you're one of the few Americans not subscribing to American Dope, then obviously. Like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Uh, Motown Mafia Podcast at Big Boss also do the same. Go to AmericanDope.com, get some merch. What other, what, besides this great content we just putting together and you doing, what else you got coming though real quick? Well, I got the whole production yeah, studio yeah, the in studio L.A. And out, why right? are my yeah, Detroit just... people not coming out? You got to come out, take advantage of me. That's what Yeah, I mean, it looks like if you just showed me some pictures. I planted the flag. You were just showing me some pictures. the merch, the you, shop, and you everything. Got I got a two-four. Oh, oh, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. That's what we talking about here. Yeah, Tell we got me about all kind of stuff on American that Dope. That is hot. Yep, this original design by Miles High and Wow. Yep. Highlights. So how they Shout how they get how they American Dope. 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 American Dope. 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 Com. Shout out to Miles High. Did the animation for some of our videos. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So maybe we'll get we'll we'll put him back in the band too. Miles, Miles, I know. Yeah, Miles. Who the, did the, the animator? Yeah. 
Oh shit! All right, yeah, yeah that's his. That's his design. Okay, see, talented yeah. young man from Detroit living We're in killing LA the too. Game. Yep. Killing the game. All right, salute, All right. salute, salute, Alex Peace. Man.